morning everybody and welcome back to the channel yeah baby we are here for the final round of the cka south uh, at nola north sports park um i'm on my way to a track all i gotta do is just grab the motor from stewart my white rhino slap it on the little practice session go through tech and that's about it and then enjoy the rest of the day for sure so looking forward to it guys can't wait thanks for stopping in like subscribe share let's send it for sure today um class is a little mo mo was real fast yesterday and there's a couple other guys that are quick too so i hope the setup works from orlando i hope everything is truly figured out and uh then we can make adjustments moving forward for sure so let's get to it let's get to a track let me stop BSing so I can make the practice. Stewart. Brings everything protected. A nice little wooden crate. Uh, help me get it on. Got the oil. Special oil. Now that rim's wobbling a little bit. Vision. I don't know. Uh, everything's on the car. It took me a second to zip uh, tape the wire everything up. Really gotta check those tires. Check time pressure, get on track, and do one more thing that I forgot to do last time. I haven't put it on the car yet, but we're about to go practice, so let's get out there. Let's uh let's get to this. Alright, uh shit talking from Mo. Might have to shut them up. Cart Store USA is a cart parts supplier that racers and retailers can count on when they need reliable advice and service. We focus on servicing all racers with honesty and pride while maintaining customer satisfaction. We carry a full stock of Cart Republic and Tony Cart chassis, as well as IAMI and Vortex Rock engines. We've also got a host of other parts available and in stock, such as products from Rev Performance Materials, Jekko racing seats, and more. We have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And on top of that, if your order exceeds $200, shipping is on us. Check out all we have to offer today by visiting us online at cartstore-usa.com. Dear baby Jesus, practice went okay. <sighs> Did a couple changes that I needed to do before I got here, I knew that. Just one thing, and then change gearing, I dropped teeth. 3T. Now, drivers me. I love these door prizes. Very nice. Always fun to win something. So qualifying session coming up, and it's basically almost flat out through the whole track. With these Vega Reds, the track gets super sticky and you are not lifting. That turn one was like a slight lift, let the cart roll. Here, a slight lift again. Uh, I was just doing that to get the cart settled. Really, you didn't have to lift at all. It was kind of scary going into the se section because uh, last time I ran it was when the 24 hour race and with those tires, you didn't have any grip. And with the Vega Reds, you got all the grip in the world. But basically, it's all about keeping the momentum up. Um, I was trying to gear for the straightaway, but I just could not carry that gear. Um, I slowly learned the car more and more, uh, but I stayed around the 3.3 gear ratio. That's where uh, I like the car the most. Gearing wise here, slight lift again, take a right, send it in. P3 wasn't too bad. It was a really tight field. Uh, to take it, instead of taking it out of the way, I take out this inside bolt. Yeah. On entry, it will let the chassis flex, but then you made it will grip again. Yeah. Take this front bolt completely out. Take these two completely off. This one and this one. Take them out. It'll let the chassis flex barely. All right, guys. I don't know if this thing is recording. I hope it is. Um, qualifying P3. It's not that impressive because P1 and P2 are a second faster. So I got to find a second. Uh, one more gear change. I drop another two. And then uh, those seat struts, they're loose. I felt, I felt the cart was way better like that. Uh, didn't feel so stuck to the ground. 
uh, Dylan was watching me. Uh, the cart wasn't, it wasn't lifting up off the ground, but it was, you know, too much caster in the front end. So I rolled the caster to get the rear to sell down and not make the cart so pointy. So we're gonna do that now and then go from there. And hopefully that makes a much better difference. So on to heat one, I'm starting P3 on the inside. And really, I think starting on the outside was a better choice because you could get a better run into turn one. Um, here you'd be almost a little pinched off, but the top two had uh, nitrous hooked up. They were rolling. Uh, that was Mo and Megan, man, they were freaking flying. And in here, uh, Robert passes me. So I'm, I slot in the fourth place. Uh, and then from here, the top two start driving away and I have to have a really good battle. Uh, for P3 and you know the cart was just binding in the middle of the corner because uh, I had taken the caster out because I'm not I usually I don't run any caster in the car okay guys uh, caster to me makes the cart steering wheel heavy so but every chassis is different and learning about this chassis more uh, caster was key um, I try to get around Robert as quickly as possible because I know him and um, Hunter are BFFs <clears throat> and it was going to be a 2-1 type deal. So if I led the way, uh, I thought it would be more difficult for them to get around me. Um, plus the way I was geared, I was geared more for the bottom end. They are geared for more the top end. So it was all about staying in front uh, of those two. And then trying to reel in the top two, which was just a fantasy. <laughs> oh my God. It was really a fantasy, man. They were just six tenths quicker. And then right here, uh, Robert is going to get by me again easily. Uh, he was geared from where the top end. Uh, I was just geared for the bottom. So I thought I could get away from him, but the draft was so strong. I just could not get away from him at all. And I knew Hunter was pretty close behind us as well. So it was basically holding on for dear life and um, trying to trying to get up. Uh, this track was extremely physically demanding. Um, due to the amount of grip and you're never lifting at all and you're constantly turning into those Gs and... It was 90 plus degrees and uh, this was a very physically demanding track. I mean, I was toast. Um, the amount of laps were so much for us and uh, the amount of uh, driving and, and stuff like that was a lot. So I noticed that um, once Robert got by me, he was not pulling away. So I was just going to sit behind him. I'm okay with sitting behind somebody if I know they're not going to drive away from me. Um, so I took that as a, okay, I'm going to sit back here and just, uh, push the whole way and I'll try to make my move, uh, coming into the last corner. But on top of that, you gotta be on your game and you gotta be able to drive all the time. And I, I can't do that. So I got a good, really good run out of, uh, turn three. I decided to go back on the inside and take the lead again. So that's what I did. It was a short lived victory cause the wonder twins, Ended up blowing by me down the straightaway. Uh, they were geared way from our top end. But now it was, I have to break them up. Uh, I didn't want them to stick together. Uh, I know they were working together. And Hunter made it easy for me. Right when he made for the move into turn one, he was able to make a mistake, slow himself up. I was able to get past him. And then the goal was trying to track down Robert. Uh, I think I could get back up to him. Um, but coming up to his last lap, I was digging really, really hard, and uh, I, I thought Hunter was going to push me, but at the same time, I had in my back of my mind, he's probably not going to push me up to Robert, so I was digging hard. Um, I thought I could have one little last shot going to the final corner. If I hit all my marks perfect, uh, Robert was driving on point, so it was really, really hard to do so, and then you're going to see here uh, towards the end, after the double right, down the straightaway, I expected the push. I didn't get the push um, and then at the last second I went to go block um, I saw him there this is my fault like I raised my hand up in the air and my cart twisted to the right it had been pulling all to the right so I raised my hand up and we touched wheels and he ended up running over me um, completely my fault um, next time don't take your hands off the wheel <laughs> for sure so uh, motor was uh, pretty jacked up Sorry, Stuart. Uh, made him work a little bit. Uh, chassis, I had a bent steering column, bent tie rod, uh, front fairing mount destroyed. So I had some work to do. 
Uh, I know John carries some parts uh, that I could use, so I went to John uh, Precision Karting and then grabbed some uh, steering column, a tie rod. Uh, I Right when I got out of the car, I went straight to Hunter. I asked him if he was okay. Uh, he was. Austin found my GoPro because that was destroyed. So I had some work to do. Um, but in the end, super happy that everybody was fine and okay. Um, glad I was able to get the GoPro back. Uh, just had to electrically tape it up a little bit and uh, call it good. But overall, stupid mistake on my end. Just expected a push and raised my hand. The cart twisted right, caused a big, big accident. I'm glad both of us are okay. But, man, that that's a mistake that I won't let happen again. Uh, ended up last, but in the end, super happy that everybody was okay. Oh, my God. Where to start? Good race in heat one. Didn't have anything for a top two. Uh, having a good battle with nine and six, six, nine. And then last lap, I expected a push. Uh, didn't get it, so I went the block. Cart was already there, ran over me. Messed up a lot of stuff. A tie rod steering column. Spark plug wire, spark plug, top of the car. Yeah. Try and get it worked out. I already had the car torn apart, but. Mm. Gotta find some parts then. Mm. Not the way I want to start. All right, everything's put together. I just cranked it up. It's, uh, it's revving to the moon. I don't know why, but Stewart came over. Mo's dad came over. Uh, thanks to Precision's performance, uh, John, he gave me the parts I needed and put everything back together, and hopefully it runs. It runs well. All right, for that last heat race, I did not have the GoPro mounted. I didn't have time to get the new mount on it, but now I do. I'll have film in the final. It was a good run. Uh, I just got tired. This track is extremely demanding. <clears throat> uh, chassis is getting quicker. This chassis likes caster. Doesn't make any sense, but the more caster I throw at it, the quicker I get. Um, one final big swing and add some teeth because I think I'm too low. Let's send it. So before that run, I was running like a 3-1-8 gear ratio, and I could not pull that gear ratio in heat two. So I decided to go back to my 3-3 gear ratio. Uh, did a lot better with it. Got off to a start. Uh, I was actually up with um, making and Mo. And like I said, starting on the outside, if you were not P1, it was better off. I slid into third. And then I was able to keep up with these uh, two youngsters up ahead for a couple laps until uh i just got tired man just <laughs> just just ran out of steam but um yeah definitely uh and megan's gotten this cosmic to work uh when when he's able to scale it out and put some weight on it uh, he's really really quick in this uh cosmic cart uh he's powered by stewart as well and you know those motors ain't no joke um here him and mo hook up and you know uh, right there it was just like mo would hit the wall and then make him his gearing were able to push through him um i think if i was in better shape to be honest cardio wise i could run up and stay with these guys but automatically pushing as hard as i was off the bat i got tired and i could not keep the pace that they could so i had a pretty big gap uh back to fourth and then so i started backing off and try to save the energy i had uh, like I said earlier, this track was no joke demanding. Um, even the guys that double duty it up um, all the time, they were struggling. Um, it's just all the high speed corners. You got this little straightaway. I mean, it's not little. It's a long straightaway. They're relaxed for a second. But after that, I mean, you're back on it for the rest of the lap. So think about it. You get an eight second break for and then the rest of the 42 seconds, you're back on it. So I, I didn't have anything for the top two. So I was just a sitting duck and waiting for the other guys to catch me. And I knew they were going to catch me. I knew they were going to end up past me uh, down the straightaway. But with my gearing, um, if I could stay close in the tight section, I was going to be completely fine. 
Uh, so they motor by me on the uh, fast stuff, but then I knew right off the bat um, in the tight section, uh, I was going to be fine. Uh, I got scared of Hunter there for a second <laughs> again. Uh, he went right off track slightly, but uh, it was all good. Uh, and then I just reeled down uh, uh, Robert. If you're able to break them and uh, stay with them, is there. So I stayed behind Robert the whole race and just pushed him. Uh, I was saving my energy and just pushing him the whole race. I wasn't going to make a pass. Uh, I already had set up that I was going to make a pass down the straightaway. Um, just leave him a big gap and then just motor on by. Uh, Hunter was right behind me, so I was not pushing that hard in the infield because I knew his gearing was much. Uh, he was running like a 3 1 something gear ratio. So if I held him up on a slight sec slow section, I would get the toe right here and break the draft. So what happened was. Um, he just made one slight mistake and the moment he broke uh, we broke his draft it was just me and robert and at this point i knew robert was a saying duck so you do not want to be leading at least in the heavy class you don't want to be leading going to a final lap so right here i just give him a bump let him know i'm there uh, i'm just gonna hold hang out behind him uh, i'm not gonna push him the rest of the time we have a nice gap back to hunter so i'm just gonna ride around and then just time it. It was all about a timing thing. I had done it uh, a little bit earlier in the race, timed it, pulled up next to him, then slid right back behind him. Um, once I went to his double right, this left, then I was going to start sucking back up to him. And then I just wanted to leave a pretty good gap. And right here, I'm just going to flat foot it and get that toe. And after that, he's a sitting duck. I easily am able to make the pass. Uh, I'm not I'm not even needing to defend. I see his nose coming into his final corner, uh, but he wasn't able to get there all the way. Uh, P3, awesome racing with these guys. Excellent race. Uh, I was dead after this, guys. Super freaking dead. But for sure, what a hell of a run. I'm really hoping all this is recording. GoPro took a big hit. Right now it's uh, electrically taped together. Now the roll like that, the side cover with the batteries at, the SD cards, uh, not doing too good. But, P3 in the end, I gotta thank all the help uh, I got. I gotta thank Barry. Barry's gonna one tune the cart uh, from home. Alright, the cart loves Castle. The more Castles the chassis has, the faster I'm getting. It really, really loves casting. Just frees it up so much more. The car was on rails, but I lost the draft from the lead guys and the two behind me were working together to catch me. And when they did, I had to sit back and I got tired. And Jesus, I, I'm glad tomorrow's one less heat race, to be honest. If I sit that one, I'll just race the final. Ah. All right, guys, I had a blast today. We gotta do a award ceremony. It's been a minute. Yeah, good. It's been cool, man. I, I got I got a trophy from CKMA. Let's see. Uh, let's see if tomorrow we can double up. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you guys on track. Love you guys. Take it easy. I gotta say thanks, uh, Dylan, David, for letting me. Uh, Elmer for helping me out. Oh, the chassis. I'm starting to love it. Just take time, baby. Oh, she's so wrecked. <laughs>